without a doubt, one of the best-known ventriloquists around. Um, you were a Jeopardy question. How did, that, <laughs> how did that come about? Well, you know what? I didn't even know. I was driving home from Michigan doing shows up there. My son's in college, Brett. He calls and goes, Dad, you're on Jeopardy. I said, no, I'm driving in the car. I'm not on Jeopardy. He said, no, you were a question on Jeopardy. And I guess what it was, they had a, a category called puppet heads, people ahead of things. And the question came out, it was a celebrity Jeopardy show. And the question was, America's number one children's ventriloquist and executive director of the ventriloquist convention. Kind of a combined question. And Chris Matthews says, who is Mark Wade? He's the guy from Hardball. Okay. I said, gosh, I said, they must have given him some cheat sheets somewhere along the line to know that kind of obscure answer. But but uh, they, they gave him a sample. And that was, that was a question. It was Jeff was one of the questions, Edgar Bergen. Senior Winters, myself, and it was, I think, Paul Winchell or Jimmy Nelson. Jimmy Nelson was the other one. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky to get in that nice mix of people. You know, that, that's funny. And you've never had any dealings with uh, Chris Matthews? No, never have. I don't even know the guy. So I see him on television occasionally. I tried to get the clip, and I found out they filmed so many shows that they didn't have the clip any longer. They get rid of them. So I had Kelly Asbury and other people out in California looking for me, but we couldn't get it. Oh, that's a shame. Been nice. So, Mark, uh, when did you, how did you get involved in ventriloquism? What was your interest in it? Uh, when did you get started? Well, I got started back in high school days. Uh, actually, even before that, I had the Danny O'Day doll when I was a kid growing up. And then, of course, I had a Charlie McCarthy doll as well. And, and you went through that. And then you went through cycles of on and off with it. But I got more interested in performing when I was in high school. So, uh, later on, in, in when I was going to get ready to go to college, a friend of mine was a magician, amateur magician. He bought out a magic store, and then the magic store when he bought it out was one of the original mimeographed mayor courses. So I got it. He gave the whole thing to me, and I went through it lesson by lesson and practiced it. But I didn't know that. I thought, well, this is obscure. Nobody's doing this anymore. You know, Fred Mayer's dead, and the address was in Michigan. Then lo and behold, I found out that the course was still active out in, in Colorado with Clinton Detweiler. So I rode out there and got the course. I took it actually twice. One that didn't count the first time, which I learned a lot from. And I even learned more the second time when I graduated from the mayor's school uh, of ventriloquism in those days. So, yeah, it was kind of a double thing. But I, I did that back in the early, uh, late 60s, early 70s. And then um, I taught elementary school. I have a teaching degree from Ohio University. Taught elementary school. It worked out well. I liked it. But I was, had some spring break time, so I went out to some other schools in the neighboring districts, did some school shows and did some things that way. And the guys goes, you know, you're better than the guys who've been hiring. You've ever tried to do it full time. So I took a year off from teaching, and this is my 35th year doing it full time. Fantastic.